Howdy friends. Just a real quick video going for a bit of a hike in the woods. Thought I'd take you along with me this time and uh, show you some kind of different levels of succession in the forest, what one stage will look like compared to another. Because uh, it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, forests affect us all so dramatically every single day of our lives, don't they? You know, whether it's the products that you use that come from forests, um, whether it's botanical forest products, whether it's actually dimensional lumber, whether it's craftsmanship, you know, uh, carving, all these different kinds of things. We, we cultivate forests to provide the best product for those particular marketplaces. And, uh, and you, are, as a consumer, are a very important part of that. What happens out here, based off what you buy and why you buy it. Personally, I like to see people start buying more things made out of wood rather than plastic, simply because um, carbon sinks and all that different kind of stuff, you know, this is a renewable resource that, that human beings have grown the brain capacity to try and manage, and yet we're still buying everything made out of plastic. So much more we could be doing with this green technology that, uh, that we see around us here. And what you actually see here is around a 25-year-old um, a stand with a couple of uh, mature trees in here, like there's a spruce right here, but 150 years old. There's a cedar vet right there, which is, which is dead. You can see in the background that's a snag that's leaning. The roots have caved out on it. It's slightly off to the side. It's kind of like a leaning period. Sorry, a leaning... Uh, what is it? The Pisa? And you know, Pisa Tower. Anyway, uh, back to this here 25-year-old um, stand, and you can see how the crowns have lifted, how the uh, the environment is really rather dark. And what's happening is, be because even though the species that we have here are very shade to tolerant, they're very shade tolerant species, like a pine needs to be in full sunlight. Uh, most of your deciduous trees need to be in full sunlight in order to really maximize their photosynthate process. These are more shade tolerant trees, which means they can they can live in a uh, shady environment up to a certain point. This one here is too shady. There is no understory coming up underneath. The crowns are lifting. The only thing you have growing down here pretty much is moss. But this is a 25 year old second growth forest. <clears throat> and you can see there's a heck of a lot of uh, uh, mortality here. Lots of trees are dying. They're just totally shaded out. The competition is just far too much. And these uh, these trees that have, have been able to shoot up faster are getting more of the sunlight and everything down below is dying out. So that's just a normal part of this, uh, this young seral stage. We'll go ahead and look at another uh, timber type to show you the, the difference. So what happens as things start to evolve through time and what this will eventually be come to look like in the future. Well, here we are. We've uh, magically transported ourselves f forward in time uh, from about 25 to 35 years to about 150 years in the, into the future. And that stand we were, that dark stand that we were in has evolved through uh, a couple of human lifetimes at least and, and turned into this. And this here is essentially a stand that is, is that is stable. It is a mature stand. Not a juvenile stand, it is a mature stand. 100 to 150 years old. And, um, and so what you see here is is a forest that is essentially all of the uh, all of the trees that uh, that died because of being shaded out or because of root rots, um, all kinds of different fungal pathogens that exist in a forest. <clears throat> Remember, what you see of the forest is only fifty percent; the remainder is below ground, and under this forest floor is basically an entire network of different kingdoms that are constantly competing with one another for the uh, for the resources that are underneath the ground here and I'm, a big part of that is fungus and there is an entire entirely huge spectrum of different funguses that that are that are in these these forests some of them actually benefit the trees some of them will just kill them 
And so a lot of these diseases, these fungal diseases, are transferred from tree to tree through root contact. So anyways, a lot of the mortality that has been induced by all of these different factors, biological and abiotic, which for example would be like a weather event, so blowdown, or, uh, or uh, snow breakage, or could be a frost event, you know, um, climatic events that actually impact forests will kill trees as well. After all the biotic and abiotic factors that induce mortality, such as crowns lifting and whatnot, this is what you kind of get left up with when I'm 100 to 150 years old. Basically, essentially the same forest, but just 100 to 150 years in the, into the future. And, and what you see are trees here that have in the neighborhood of around 15% live crown. But, there's a, but um, because of mortality, those, some of those trees in between have actually just fallen. And as a result, because of the mortality, much more light is now hitting the forest floor. And you'll see this new greenery uh, that exists below this canopy of young, healthy, vibrant regen <clears throat> that is coming back. And it is, uh, it, it, it's really wonderful. If you're going to be finding critters and creatures with fur in this forest, generally what you're going to be doing is you're going to start them to see, to see those species in this kind of, in these kinds of areas, even more so the more it opens up. The further it opens up, the more, the more wildlife you see coming in because a brow is coming up. But in this case, um, it's still shady enough where you're not going to get the pioneer species like your pine and your deciduous, uh, species coming in here because there just isn't quite enough sunlight to make it worthwhile. So these here, these are shade tolerant species and it's another seral stage in a forest or as, or a forestry succession as, as a forest evolves and transforms over time from being, uh, you know, a deciduous forest or a mixed wood forest into, into a, um, a climax forest like this where you have nothing but shade tolerant species all the way up to the top. Shade intolerant species can't exist in this environment. Isn't forestry cool? It's cool. I know what you think it is. Hemlock, spruce, cedar forest, and here we have a tree I thought you guys might be interested in. This is uh, western hemlock and it is covered in a vegetative parasite called hemlock dwarf mistletoe. And if you look at these branches here, you'll see that there are some swellings. Let's look at this one here. These clusters of branches, for example, you can see how the branches are swollen. And here we have the culprit right here. This here is the hemlock dwarf mistletoe. And this here is a, uh, a plant that has actually uh, got its sinkers and roots sunk into the cambium layer of this western hemlock. You can see the swollen branches in this area here. There's some pits from where the, some of these plants have been before. You'll see there's a seed pod at the end of each one of these stalks. And uh, it will eventually swell up. There will be a seed developed at the end here in the embryo. It will swell up with... Uh, with uh, with moisture and at the right time of the year it will actually burst and it'll shoot a seed out and it'll rain down on the region down below it. Now this here is actually a tree that has received uh, this uh, pathogen from above. Well here we are back into the second growth forest. An unmanaged second growth forest. What I mean by that is it's never been thinned. It's just basically grown up and you know, it's thinning itself through time, self-pruning them, the stems and shading them out. Anyway, that's uh, pretty much a little hike in the woods with a rifle chair. A little bit of forestry talk, subject I don't talk about very often, but as you can obviously tell, it's pretty close to my heart. <laughs> uh, love this stuff. I think we should know more about forests. That's enough for me. Hope you're all doing well. Cheers, and as always, maple leaf up.